So welcome everybody to another Voices with Raveki. Um, I'm very pleased to once again uh, be talking with Daniel Zaruba. Uh, we had a fantastic discussion uh, around Nishitani and the meaning crisis. And I, I asked Daniel to mention this at some point in the discussion, but I'm just gonna put it up front. He's running an amazing uh, uh, course, which you, many of you have noted, I've tweeted about it multiple times on Nishitani and uh, how appropriate and pertinent Nishitani's work is right now. And, uh, and so some of you might know him from that. And I, I invite, in fact, I recommend everybody to get involved with Daniel's work and the work he's doing to make Nishitani uh, more accessible to people in the so-called West. So welcome, Daniel. It's great, to, it's great to be talking with you again. Thank you for the invitation, John. I'm also very happy to speak with you again. So maybe, go ahead, go ahead, Daniel. No, maybe I'll say a few things on the course. So kind of Please. the first the first round is, is almost over now, <laughs> yeah. but I am planning to do the course again, maybe next year somewhere, maybe in the summer again. Excellent. Uh, and yeah, I've also taken in some of some of your um, feedback and I'm, I'm trying to, to establish now also a meditation group kind right. of like continually so yeah. we we yeah. we really do meditation regular on a regular basis because that's so important as yeah. I've, I've also realized in the course it's so important to to do the meditation practice uh, on the side mm -hmm. so i'm now trying also to to um so we'll start this very soon that we also get maybe a meditation group going um Excellent. And yeah, that's that's what I'm I'm now planning to do. Also, but we had this yesterday in the seminar that all this conceptual language is so, it's it's so it's also so hard to get out of those let's say of yeah. the participatory, yeah, from the from the propositional knowing to use okay. your term into the into the participatory knowing yes. Yes. when you're not when you're not um when you're not used to it yeah in in through practice yeah. Yeah, that's very well said. Yeah, I, I do think that uh, I, I'm coming to sort of a, a, a firm position. I, I, it's not novel to me. I think it's very much a dose position um, that, uh, yeah, if you, if you want to practice philosophia, you have to be doing, you have to be doing mindfulness practices, meditative practices, contemplative practices. I'm, I'm working on a book chapter on exactly that argument uh, right now. Uh, so yeah, I uh, and uh, the fact that uh, the fact that you're doing that, I think, is going to be welcome. Please let me know when you're going to do the the course again, because uh, I'll do everything I can to let uh, people know it, uh, know about it, uh, so you can get a lot of people attending and benefiting from it. So uh, I thought maybe we could. You you said there's a few things you'd like to talk about to me. Uh, and, and although the, I'm, I'm the host, um, uh, maybe that's a, a that's an interesting way, a little bit of role reversal to get things started. Um, and so I, like, I'll turn it over to you. Like, what, do you, what would you like to talk about? What would you like to engage in? I was I was really, really impressed um, when I saw your latest videos with um, Paul Vanderclay, um, JP Marceau, John yeah. Hall and Guy, Guy Sangstock. Yeah. On that, on your project of eidetic eduction, yeah, um, and kind of like what Nishitani is kind of like talking all the time, and and one Kyoto School scholar, um, John Crummel, um, characterizes Nishitani even as having an an ontological position, mm. which means that the thing is always beyond, it's inexhaustible beyond yeah. exhaustion. It yeah. can never be, it can never be captured. By yeah. any 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 way of reification that we want to put on it, it's always it's always burst like the aspects are always exploding, bursting through into into the mourners, yes, so yes. to say. And <clears throat> maybe maybe you can talk about how we can how we can induce that kind of like th those trans aspectual yeah um, aspect <laughs> of, yeah. of the thing. Um, because when, when, when we did this Dialogos course with Chris and Guy and you, I, I had this wonderful moment where not, not, let's say with an, even not with an object, but let's even say with like an, an idea mm. or virtue, let's say. Yeah, with, with yeah, yeah. So we did this, that we, we, we circled around, let's say a virtue, um, 
I did it once um, then in a private group. We did it with filial love. Yeah. And we kind of like, right, there, there's this, even, even with non-object, let's say you see that there is almost an inexhaustibility to them. Yes. When yes. you do the, when you do the induction and when you do the yeah. dialogic, when you, do, when you do the dialogical yeah. induction. Yeah. I'm glad you're seeing that because the, the part of the <laughs> argument I'm working towards, I was working uh, with, with Jordan and uh, with Guy was uh, the deep, the deep interconnections between dialogos and eidetic adduction, uh, trying to get clearer uh, about how the philia and the sophia come together, if you'll I'll allow me that. One of the things I was trying to do with that, especially with, because uh, I, I explicitly told Jordan and Guy about it, is I wanted to show uh, both within dialogue and between dialogues, uh, you know, I, I was trying to exemplify Right, the very thing I was trying to talk about, and 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 try. I, I'm I'm experimenting a lot with the with the with the medium and the format, and how can we use it to, uh, you know, uh, enrich our philosophical practice. Um, and so uh, I'm glad you picked up on that because that was the intent. In fact, of even doing the the the, the sequence, I want to do I want to do that again with other things. Um, yeah, I, the 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 idea is. This came out of work I've been doing with Dan Chiappi, um, my co-author on a bunch of papers. We've released uh, a couple of recent ones. We have another one coming out soon. Um, and we were reading very carefully uh, Schindler's book, uh, Plato's Critique of Impure Reason. And then we've been reading, uh, we've read, we reread together Marlo Ponti's preface to the phenomenology. And we're going through John Rusin's work on uh, bearing witness to epiphany. And so, Rusin and Schindler are like doing this to me, um, especially about the idea of integrating um, phenomenology and Platonism uh, together. Now, the, the, the problem for that for many people, if, uh, you know, with a philosophical background is uh, post Heidegger, these are often seen as somehow oppositional uh, to each other. Um, but if you look at Husserl, um, it's clear that they were meant to be very closely. Husserl's using all this platonic language uh, all the way through uh, his attempt to articulate what's going on in phenomenology, uh, because I think he was engaged in a project very similar to Plato's, which is trying to explicate. Um, I don't. I don't have quite the right now. I want to say something other than process, but the process of intelligibility uh, and uh, right and trying to disclose that. And so I've been thinking about, well, what does that, what might that look like, uh, you know, informed by the work I've been doing and some of the stuff from object-oriented ontology and the work I've been doing with Dan and Guy and Jordan, and, and, and then try to work out what that would look like as, as a practice, a practice that I've come to call eidetic eduction. And, and the basic idea of it um, is, uh, you, know, you can see it's, 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 it's a variation, maybe even an exaptation of uh, uh, Fusserl's, you know, eidetic, redu eidetic reduction and things like that. But the basic idea is this. I was trying to come up with a new, maybe an old <laughs> way of understanding what a platonic eidos is, a form, uh, and get away from being bound to the shape metaphor that we've been sort of bound into by the term form for the idos. And the fact that idos actually translate originally more like something like the look of something made me think, oh wait, and this made me think of both Heidegger, but especially Wittgenstein and aspect shifting and all the work from Gestalt psychology and all the work I do on insight. And I was thinking, well, and, and then of course in, in uh, Husserl's phenomenology is any object, you know, anything that we think of as an object Right, so here's my jackknife, right? And right, it it has an you know there you never actually, and this is this is one of you know Husserl Husserl often says these things that are sort of simultaneously obvious and profound, which is you never see the the object, right? You always only see an aspect of it because you can't get the simultaneity uh, of mu uh, of multi perspectival of all the possible even spatial aspects of it let alone the functional aspects i can use this as a knife i can use this as a measuring weapon i can use this to stand for the letter i i can right so you have multi aspectuality right and that of course 
lines up with the work I do in CogSci about how every object is combinatorially explosive in the amount of information, which is relations it can bear within itself and to other things. But the thing that was getting to me, but Plato was trying to do something with this notion of the looks, all the aspects. And he's, and he's trying to say something about, but, but the, 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 the eidos is itself not, percept, not perceptual, right? It's somehow transperceptual. And, I was, and then I realized, well, Husserl says, says something very similar. He says, right, although you can never, right, you don't have this, nevertheless, within your phenomenology, we have to be really careful here about how we're using that term. because it, it is within your phenomenology, but it's not a direct perceptible object. You nevertheless perceive the object, right? And, and it was like, and, I, and it, it just sort of hit me like, oh, right, somehow out of, right, th this multi-aspectuality, this inexhaustible multi-aspectuality does, uh, does not unfold chaotically. It does not unfold. It, it has a through line to it. It is relentlessly intelligible. Somehow, and, and they are not identical in terms of their content, all these aspects belong together. They somehow share, an, they share a non-logical identity with each other. I call this like the through line. And, and, I, and I was thinking, oh, oh, and that's, that I think is a better model of what Plato means by the form. And, and then I was thinking, and that, that, that also gives us, would bind us back into the conformity theory of knowing, because, you know, and this is, a, this is again, this is kind of a Harmon twist uh, on, on, uh, on Kant. The through line of this object is bound up with the through line of me. I am also multi factual as I am picking up on all the aspects. So the through line of the idos of the thing is akin, to use Plato's language, uh, to the through line within me. And that me, and this, of course, Hume made famous in a negative fashion, is not, not anything I ever observe, uh, but nevertheless, it is a proper part of the phenomenology of the self, because the self is experienced as something that is bound together in a non-logical way. And we try and capture that with narrative. So here's the two, here's the two points, right? That which binds all these aspects together is not itself an aspect. Mm. That which binds all of me together is not another me. And those two are bound together in a dialogical wedding whenever I am trying to make intelligible anything. And I think that is much closer uh, to what Plato is trying to disclose when he's talking about the eidos and the kinship between the suke, the soul, and the eidos. And, and, it, it, and it's the, it, by, by bringing this back into a phenomenological experience and something one can practice, I'm trying to revitalize the platonic theory of the forms. Sorry, that was a lot, but that's, I needed to say sort of that whole argument to get it out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me okay I, I thought a little bit about it um, and I, I might I might work a little bit now with with JP Marceau's kind of like his model that he, he yeah. laid out yeah yeah so so, so let's say the, the aspects emerge from the bottom yes and from the from the ground of he would say um, non-being the nihilum yeah or, yeah. or emptiness or so yeah, yep. So the, the aspects emerge and the, kind of like, um, so, so you say there's this, all, all the aspects, all, all, let's say the characteristics of the whatness of an object yeah. of myself form an, a non-logical identity that isn't in itself higher, that is also kind of like a no thing. There's yeah. not an aspect in itself. Yes, exactly. But something, some, some, not, not even something, no thing else, something. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yes, um, and I, I think right. We could maybe say this is now, this is now, maybe the Geist or something like that. It's, yeah, yes, 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 yes. It's 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 a it's a kind of like um, it's a third kind. Maybe maybe we can use that that language. Even even um, this is an insight from Nishida, who was really also interested in kind of like the in Plato. 
yeah. um, he thought that that there is right there's there's being and non-being right and they always oscillate between each other yes. in the in the yes. in the in the, yeah. in the chora, yeah which was then this kind of like the centerpiece in, in Nishida's ontology, what was yes. this, this receptacle, the place, yes. the core of kind yeah, of yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. in what, what Plato calls it Triton genos, a third kind, something, yeah. something ontologically different from all the other things. Yes. Yes. And, and I, I sometimes, I think this is comes to your relevance realization in, in, yes. Yes. in yeah. any kind of anyways. So, so no, that's directly right. I think that's, <laughs> let's come back to that. Because the process of relevance realization, I think, I don't want to say it's reflected because I'm not trying to speak like a form of Berkeleyan idealism, but there's, there, there's, there's a mirroring of the way relevance realization is unfolding in a way in, way in which eidetic eduction is disclosing. Yes, I think that's important, but please continue. Okay, and then right, JP talks then about there's also right the, the, the constraint, the one the that emanates yeah. down. Yeah, right? yes, yes, yes. Um, and that that's then kind of like um, I would say constitutes what right what the Buddhists call um, the first the suchness, although yeah. maybe, and then um, yeah, I, I tend to think of the moreness and the suchness as directional, and and Heraclitus is the way up and the way down are the same way. The, hmm. the, I think of the way this comes in. So the, let's use the language of determination the way Pearl does. When, when you get the determination that gives you a determinate singularity, right? That can't be, ca cannot be captured categorically. That's the suchness. But when you see that suchness, right? In terms of how it, right? Proceeds, <laughs> my language mm -hmm. is failing me, into, right? This combinatorial explosiveness of all the possible intelligibilities it can participate in that's what i think of as the moreness does that did that help or or yeah right there's this um there is in all of that and that's i think there's there's this wonder as well that yeah. we have an identity yes what you would say the non-logical identity very that's, much yes that's kind of like that's a, that's a wonderful thing that that we we, we have that uh, <laughs> and and right there there is even in, in Nishitani, like identity becomes so important in this, what he used, calls the Siva. Yes. The Siva, yeah. it, the Siva is just this, is this, is indicates that that self identity or self sameness, let's say, between form and emptiness. Yes. But, but yeah. he uses it for all kinds of being and no thingness. And, yep. Yep. and yep. let's yep. say that the one and the no thingness yes. or the one and the Very many. Um, yes. And but but right, he he points at that that again the siva is in a sense is it's a third kind. It's yes, this. yes, yes. And, and 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 I think the third kind ha has also been discovered convergently, but also a little bit off uh, by people like Derrida, uh, because I think what Derrida was doing with difference was trying to pick yeah, up yeah. on this as well. Um, and he would. But he was, at, I see Derrida at times overemphasizing, although towards the end, he gets very interested in negative theology, right? And he's like, well, not towards the end. He keeps doing that, becomes more prominent, right? Because uh, I think he, he overemphasized, I don't know, what you might call the privative or, or destructive aspects of difference right, for intelligibility, even though his argument is based on the difference is actually constitutive in an important way of intelligibility. And I think, uh, you know, uh, re, I don't know, getting a more proper dialogue going between this, I, I'm going to call it my attempt, my and other people's attempt to revise the Platonic tradition, um, and the post Heideggerians like Derrida, who tend to have a very negative view of the Platonic tradition. I think that could be a very, very fruitful. I want to mention that the, the discussion with JP, right, um, it, like, so we're, uh, it's deeply influenced, and I've proposed this to JP, uh, it's deeply influenced by John Scottus Eregina, who I consider, uh, you know, Eregina and Nicholas of Cusa for me are the culmination of the Socratic tradition. It's so interesting eh, that by the time you get to Nicholas of Cusa, his great insight is learned ignorance, which is exactly where we start with Socrates. It's this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful explication. Uh, and so Eregina's notion of God is inherently 
dialectical, dialogical. And um, I think this is part of, and this is the part that's unclear to me, Daniel, but I'm, I'm, I'm groping. This is part of what's going on when Plato is trying to talk about the inherent goodness, uh, right? That, that, right? So the, the, uh, the forms don't form, <laughs> they don't form an, they're not isolated, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and they, they unf it's not only that there's an eidetic eduction of everything, singular, there's an eidetic eduction of everything, plural, right? And, and, and so Ergina is trying to get the emanation and the emergence, right, to, right, to explicate all of that, but also to get us to disclose, which is, of course, a, a fundamental Christian tenet, but it's also converges with the Platonic tenet, that there's something inherently good about being, that it's not a moral goodness or an aesthetic goodness or um, an ethical goodness. And th the reason I'm saying all of this is this is the wonder like there's a there's an inherent wonder in this yeah. be, because because and, and then this is Harmon's point too, but it's a Platonic point. I cannot right. I have to use this fundamental I don't know what to call it ontological machinery of myself right in order to really get what this is, really get what this object is. It's like mm -hmm. I, I, here's what you can hear. I'm stumbling. I'm, and Schindler tries to make there's this argument too that this this deep deep kinship between my 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 idos and the idoses or the idai I don't know what the plural would be right that there's a fundamental goodness there and the way I try to practice that is right the way in which my awareness can be for itself for its own sake and my life can be for itself in its own sake, and my love can be for itself in its own sake. That for its own sake, that seems so fundamental to my sense of my realness and my unquestioned, or it can become egocentric, but my unquestioned goodness of being. And then I realized, but that is not centered in me. The kinship is means that it's actually dependent on the way all of reality, this is Schindler's argument, has that feature to it. And so I cannot, I cannot make any, there's no good grounds for privileging that within me. And, and there, but there are some good grounds for actually privileging it without me. Uh, it, and so that for me is my attempt to get at this idea of the good as the idos of the idos. And you see me struggling. Um, and I, I did a recent video with, uh, with Greg Enriquez and Zachary Stein uh, you know, where we, where we were criticizing the is ought uh, distinction and the arguments around the is ought fallacy and trying to articulate this more primordial sense of goodness. To me, why that's important, and I, and I really see Nishitani and Nishida trying to do this, I really do. For me, um, I think that is part of the fundamental way of responding to nihilism, is, is to get and to not as you said, not to state it, but to wonder and ponder and participate in that goodness. <laughs> this is this is really. <laughs> uh, I'm maybe maybe we can we can. Okay, that that's what I had in mind. So even right when you when you talked and right you you get kind of like you you you. You dive, you dive into that wonder of, of all yeah. the aspects and see yeah. that there is there is something that is beyond all aspects. Yes. And we say, okay, I and then we come to the to the goodness of being, kind of yes. like the ontological goodness that yes. is that that is kind of like per, not pervading, going through kind of like this through line what you said right it's, yeah yes, it's yes. going 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 through all things yeah yes and through myself yes yes that's that that's the that's affinity that, the kinship yeah keep going keep going it's almost this right i almost said this right what nishitani calls that the, the dropped off body mind or this 
embodiment dropping off this yeah this, dojin this, yeah 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 exactly this, yeah. yeah yeah this drops off and then then they're there it's it's almost right that you 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 yourself kind of like become that infinite wellspring yes yes now what i would not maybe and maybe maybe i'm this is just an idea that i had right now please I'm, please this is this is the place <laughs> we're just having ideas right now we're on the horizon <laughs> of, of intelligibility here Right, you know, you know, in in classical in classical metaphysics, there is always the, the distinction between the whatness and the deadness. Yes, yes, the yeah. deadness, the, the the sheer wonder of the deadness, the sheer goodness of the deadness. What is right is then usually yeah. come the, that we are all moving, let's say, in God and all participate in God. Yes, yes. because God is, let's say, the. That the most the most intimate in Augustine's language, right? The, the, the most intimate of myself yeah. is yeah. is God, and that we 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 learn to participate, uh, we 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 become a, but through identity deduction we become aware of that that ontologically different yes. sheer wonder of the deadness yes. of all things yes. Um, which is which is a different kind of wonder than the whatness of all things that this is in itself inexhaustible yes and then you, you come to, you come towards the goodness of being yeah yeah that, <laughs> yes that's good i like that and i like i like the idea yeah what i was getting from you was right and that, so there's there's also right there there's an eidetic adduction right that's not that you know, I'm trying to get that the, you 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 start to as you said the mind and body kind of thing drops away and you get the through line from suchness to moreness right the through line yeah. and I don't mean this irreligiously I mean it exactly the opposite you get the through line of God <laughs> right you get mm. right you get that and and, and 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 like I said for me I also and this is the phenomenology you know I, I, I know, what's the author of the book the uh, phenomenology of mysticism. <clears throat> and he talks about the givenness, <clears throat> which isn't the same thing as what Sellers criticized when he criticized the myth of the given. But what it means is, right, this, this, this sense that that through line is, is somehow deeper and the source of the through line that I inherently love in myself because I'm an autopoetic being, right? um that i can't if i if i if i am if i do not it, an autopoetic being is a being that takes care of itself um fundamentally cares about itself um uh, because if it doesn't do that it ceases to be it just it would just be a self-organizing system like a tornado and so there's something about and, and i and i get this also in nishida and nishitani right there's something about being alive that's not ontologically pri pri privileged but it's Ep, it's epistemically privileged because it gives us a way of reflecting on and being aware of this. Like, see, I'm really struggling here because I'm falling into the subject object language that I'm trying to transcend. But the point is, because I'm an autopoetic being, I, I inherently, and, and don't you, I know you're taking this the right way, I inherently love myself. But because I'm an autopoetic being, I can also get the affinity participate in the affinity of the through line of god and they're even and therefore even more so love that through line mm. that there's an ontological move here that and i can't make an argument for it because it's it, it's it's it grounds i think all because if you think about it the, the standard models of goodness base are based on you know this thing is good for me and I'm good for myself, right? But but remember we talked about the third kind, but what makes all of that fit together? We've never wondered, well, why, what, why does that, like, why does that all work as goodness? And what I'm trying to get at is, well, because it's, it's, like, what, it's like what Heidegger did with Aletheia. Below the correspondence theory of truth, there has to be the Aletheia that makes the correspondence possible. Here, here, think about it like this. And I did this with, with Paul and JP. We take, we take truth to be inherently good, right? But why? Why? Right? What we're saying is there's something about realness that in and of itself is inherently good. So if we think of truth in the aletheic sense, 
There's a goodness in the aletheic sense that makes all the correspondent senses of goodness possible for us. That's what I'm trying to say. That there, I feel better about that than I've said it before. So how does that land with you? Is that helpful? Or was I just going off on a stupid tangent? <laughs> no, 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 but but even even this is not what I learned in the dialogues course. Even yeah. when you do this, this kind of like this homing. Yeah. They right that the, there is a reason why Nishi, when Nishida talks about Basho as a as a place or a field. Yes. Yeah. And Heidegger talks about the clearing and all of yes, this. Yes. Yeah. It, right. The, the, the clearing yeah. of intelligibility. And Nishitani talks about fields all the time. Yes, exactly. Because yeah. they and, and this is the same idea with the third kind. There is a kind of like an, an ontological place. Yeah. That 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 makes everything that appears so the shining goodness yes some, exactly. something like that but um, both, both the shining goodness and the beautiful mystery right mm. they're bound together the, the 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 beautiful withdrawal like the like you know like a sacred night right and i'm thinking of the louis armstrong song or the bright blessed day right the two together kind of thing exactly because right this ground is not it's not a it's not a, a gr like yeah yeah, 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 ground, yeah but it's yeah. an it's an it's an off ground a ground that is ever withdrawing yes or the, or the non-ground in the in the language of the mystics right think yes, of Burma yeah. or so the, the, yeah, yeah. the non-ground yes 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 and right and then this is this uh, this important let's say ontological move that that nishitani makes where he says right nietzsche failed to do that he, he could only yeah. think about the abyss and and was kind of like he was kind of like um um absorbed by the abyss yes and, and kind of like couldn't see that that there is this this what what in dogen what we could say the body mind drops off there is this bottomlessness of the, yeah. of the ground there I, is an yeah that's good keep going that yeah. that makes this right there's just an even where where you could say then um where the the what is the what is the opposite of goodness? Kind of like the um, when we when we revenge against being in this yeah. kind of like in this right resentment become, resentment resentment, resentment yeah. against yeah. being yeah. and this then turns into the goodness of being yes. where, where we yeah. then see that this 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 non ground um, is is in a sense maybe the, the through line yes goes through all all beings yes i i think so because you and, and i think i'm proposing a way of like integrating sort of the Husserlian marlo ponti with uh Nish, nishitani's idea of the interpenetration of all things right and trying to get a way of talking about it but i wanted to pick up on what you just said about nietzsche because it made me think at that moment perhaps derrida is still too influenced by the nietzschean strain coming out of heidegger He's also bound in a particular way. He can also, although he he does talk about it as const, constituting um, intelligibility. Nevertheless, he frames his project as deconstruction, right? And, and, and therefore, he's not. He's also like Nietzsche. He's bound up in the critique, but he can't get to the critique of the critique to want to use one of Nishitani's moves, right? Um, and I think that's very important. And, and, and it's for me. What's very interesting is, like I said, about getting to the place we're in right now, like this this place, this, was it Basho, I think, right? The, the place that we're in right now, right? This to me is the place that I see at the beginning with Socrates and I see coming to fruition in Eregina and Nicholas of Cusa of what is meant by learned ignorance, right? This or I even want to sometimes say it's both learned ignorance and learned ignorance. It's, 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 it's doing both of these uh, together. And for me, therefore, I'm trying to make a case. That's what I'm doing. I'm making an argument that rather than seeing this, and this is where I'm critical of Heidegger as a rejection of Platonism, I think it is actually, especially through the whole Neoplatonic mystical tradition, I think this is actually the culmination of what originated in Socrates in a powerful way. Mm. That's a provocative thing to say, I know. Um, and I, I should also talk to Johannes at some time about this. Uh, but um, 
right there are I, sometimes i read heidegger and that there are there are you know there are some texts where he then he mentions someone like eckhart and yes and you see he, he kind of like he doesn't abandon that tradition like wholly but no. he's so he's so anxious about talking about anything that yeah. <laughs> it's always it's always it's always hard to um um with, with heidegger it's always hard to, to kind of um kind of get then what what he, he wants to say also yeah. right, he, he he's in this project he really tries but he tries to get out of the language that he does. is he so does. is so yes. burdened by our, our history um and in that sense and he really he really right he, he writes i don't know how many pages like 100 volumes right we had this last time yeah, yeah. um and and at the same time that that there are many Heideggerians who say, right, he, he shut up his whole life. But what, what you say, right, that there is, there is actually, there is not what, right, there's not what Heidegger would say, there's not the end of history, but right. actually there's the, and, yeah. and there's, I think, I see some theologians like David Bentley Hart, yes. who's very, very, very critical of postmodern theology in its entirety. Yeah. Because he, and and he, he, in his books, he's, he's also, he's speaking very, fondly of the neoplatonic tradition very much like Ariogena and Eckhart and Angelus Silesius yeah. and all these yeah. people yeah very much and he says this this whole this whole thing with what you said with Derrida of deconstruction when you think about it it's it's absurd he even yeah. makes he even is he's he's also very almost an acerbic writer he yeah. says something like um talking about post metaphysical metaphysics or so is like is like talking about post atmospheric air it's an, <laughs> <laughs> it's inherently absurd yeah and what you said is right it's 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 actually a combination and if you if, if that argument kind of like can be sustained and, and further explicated in the future also with people like schindler what you mentioned yeah i think that would be lovely if we could actually like bring that and well, culminate that platonic tradition um so, and not yeah. not deconstructed in the in in the in the yeah. inexhaustibility of academic papers in in right where we are just critical in criticism <laughs> i think that's a, thank you for saying that that i appreciate that that's very encouraging yeah i i want to i want to i want to get out of whether or not it's heidegger it's at least a heideggerian argument of Plato as the father of metaphysics and metaphysics as the history of nihilism. There's an important truth to that. And I, you know that I, I follow that truth and I try to develop it. I really try to work it out in, in awakening from the meaning crisis. But there's something else, right, that we, you and I are talking about here, that there's a way of recovering that tradition and rereading. And a lot of people are doing it. You know, the third wave that Gonzalez talked about, right, about reading Plato and rereading this and what's coming out right now. I think of Pearl's work as just exemplary. Um, what's his book? Thinking, Being, uh, the, uh, Metaphysics in a Classical Sense. And, 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 when you, and, and if you read the first chapter, I mean, he's going to do something very similar to what we're doing here. But he argues that the appropriate, what we're actually trying to do is get into right relationship with reality. And the appropriate relationship with reality is religious, which is not <laughs> meant like, you know, it, it, he's meant it's a sense of this profound affining reverence um and and i take it that 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 response that's not just conceptual not just effective not just existential but all of them together that's the that is the final way i don't mean in the sense of completion but i don't think there, we're looking for anything deeper when we are asking for a response to nihilism and the meaning crisis yeah and right he makes the argument that the the kind of like where, where let's say the ontological difference between beings and being collapsed was with Dan scotus yes when he yes. when he right he makes that argument i read the book when yeah. when you recommended it once he because he he said okay being is right he collapsed everything into nominalism yep. more or less. Yep. and then right so so Right, the, the right way, and then we even think that we can talk even about something like being, in the, with, yeah. the, with the large yeah. B, B yeah. with in a sense in, in a conceptual in a propositional sense. Yes. and then we, we and then we we, de we develop let's say all these errors. 
Yes. But right, that, that the right way to approach the ontological different is like the, the, like the people in antiquity did, not just by a conceptual way, but through, let's say, what you would say, a participatory knowing. Yeah, a transformative participatory way. I think, yeah, I think that's right. Um, there was something I wanted to say about that that was, that, that was really, uh, you were triggering something very good. In, in something that, right, that is beyond the transformation and the deduction, maybe come back to that, the eidetic deduction. Yeah. There is an, there's, an, there's something inexhaustible that goes yes. beyond the transformation itself. Yeah. Well, it's the, the transformation becomes this ascending trajectory that points yeah. towards, you know, what Gregory of Nyssa calls uh, epictasis, right? The constant that God goes from being the, uh, the final object or, 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 or of rest Right. Instead mm. of he, God is the uh, is the eternal field of self transcendence by which things are constantly engaged in this project of deeper and deeper disclosure. Oh, I remembered what I wanted to say in relationship to that. <laughs> this idea of depth and levels of reality, because nominalism. So Scotus isn't a nominalist, but he makes Occam possible. Right. And so the Scottish Occam connection is where nominalism comes out and you get the univocosity of being right. There's only there's there's there are no levels to being. And the problem, if you watch that and you watch that unfold in our history, what we get to is we get to uh, what we get is we get levels of being again, but now inverted. Because, and this is the point I was making to Paul and to JP. Reductionism okay is a levels of being ontology where people say mm -hmm. all that's real is the bottom level. Love is just chemicals and chemicals are just quarks and you get, so there's all these levels and only the really real is the bottom level. That's just Neoplatonism inverted. It's just, yeah, you know, here's the, here's all the levels and the highest level is the really real. It's, it's the same metaphor just turned upside down. They don't realize it's just inverted Platonism. So I think of nom nominalism has completely, and Derrida is going to get pissed off at me because he's <laughs> ultimately anomalous, but nominalism has completely deconstructed itself. It has completely deconstructed itself. The Nile, the, there is a deep interweaving between nihilism and reductionism as, right, as, uh, 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 as an existential stance and an ontological position. But Reductionism, reductionism presupposes a levels of being ontology. And, it, and it's only in the levels of being ontology that it can justify nihilism as a stance. And all of that just says, but why that? Because I can give you completely symmetrical argument for going the other way and, and you know, and everything we're doing here right now. <laughs> so yeah, I think, I think we're at a place where we're at a real cusp because I think that that turning point given to us uh, by Scottus and Occam has completely undermined itself. And we are now in a place where we can, we can get a post nominalist Neoplatonism that will allow us to recover the religious reverence for being. Mm, well said. <laughs> Thank you. That's another argument I, I, I've been working on with, with you know, you, uh, again, like I'm doing this, like I'm doing it with you now. I'm doing it with Paul. I'm doing it with JP. I'm doing it with Jordan. I'm doing it with Guy. It can't be, no, nobody can do this. When I say I'm working on these arguments, I don't mean that to say I'm crafting it as a monologue. I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to get everybody to do the platonic circumambulation because to return to the eidetic adduction, right? The point and, and uh, Dan Chiappi and I are going to be reading Marlo Ponti's Visible and Invisible, right? Because you can, and this is part of what Corbin is on about, and I think perhaps even Young for in the psyche, you can imaginally extend the eidetic eduction, right? You can imaginally extend the eidetic eduction, and that discloses even more of the inexhaustibleness without and within, and the inexhaustibleness between, right? Mm -hmm. And then, right, and, and, that, and that goes right more and more out and and you can see how this starts to overlap with dialogue within and without and also with religion as the serious so i'm i I'm, I, I, was, I was talking about religion as this idea of imaginally augmented reality detection but now i'm thinking of it as imaginally augmented eidetic eduction that discloses reality in a more and more powerful manner and affords a reverential love for being with the deepest through line of oneself 
namely one's soul. Um, and so that is um, trying to, I'm trying to draw it all together. Um, and, and, and so it, this has to be done with others. Ecclesia, <laughs> it has to be done in, in, in that sense of an ecclesiastically, the, the gathering, we have to gather together because we, my ego sent, I, I'm so limiting in the multi aspectuality I can extend it imaginally, but if I extend it imaginally with you in dialogue, then so much more. And then more like, and then we start to get a sense again of the wonder, the, 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 the bottomless wonder of being. Mm. You know, there's this, um, there's this paper from, from Nishitani, um, it's called, um, sameness and emptiness mm. i sent it to you yes 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 <laughs> i don't, don't know if you if you had time to read it um, I, I believe i looked at it i don't think i read it thoroughly yet i will I, I've, there I is there is there is a very similar argument to, to what you said with the imaginal with yes Koba, yeah. kind of because he says something like um right the there is a there is a middle ground when we between let's say that we, we have let's say the the the, the idea yeah to, to use this in platonic sense the idea let's say of a circle yes and then all the circles in reality yeah kind of like never achieve yeah. the, the the goodness the fitness of yeah. the, the yeah. ideal yeah. circle yeah. yeah and how we can participate and right even even nishitani and he, he invokes the platonic participation the metexis yeah. in the first yeah. chapter of religion and nothingness yeah very much because we, right there, there must be there must be a way to participate with those within those levels of reality yeah. yes 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 exactly um yes. Right? otherwise i was we are again left with just propositional knowing yeah 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 and so we need that let's say that that um participatory knowing and he says in the middle of that is is the imagination as kind of like again a third kind of third realm yeah that is it's kind of like and he, he he in this paper he discusses it in in kind of like with emptiness and kind of like also with the inexhaustibility and don't have to get into this now but i just yeah. want to say he mentions in there and this is perhaps where we can get right there are all these zen master dialogues the monk yeah. talks with the with the with the master and then the master replies something right there are, there are so many even in in japanese yeah. poetry yeah, the japanese love love poetry is often there is a there's someone writes something and then there is an answer yes. there is this this very very dialogical yes. it's not just it's not yeah. monological right. but it's always like someone says something yes. writes something yeah. to someone and then there comes an answer back and he he kind of like tries to get at how how poetry kind of like is in the in the in the in the let's say in the right. yeah. dwells yeah. in the in the immediacy of yeah. the of the idea um and thus gets out of that subject object um distinction which right. then also creates how poetry right it often it often explodes the, the boundaries of what can be said yes 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 it, very it, much. It, 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 and that's kind of what he, he goes. Nishitani talks about all these things. Um, well, the, like, the, the, religion as the imaginally augmented identity deduction. That's that's really wonderful. Thank um, you. <clears throat> well, well uh, the, re, the part of what well, thank you. I mean, there. So, if that works, I mean, it, it reach it reaches into, and I think you're right. I, I agree with you. Nishitani is the, one of the great thinkers of the 20th century uh, like he's just he is so important but it's a, this idea right that you know religion as the imaginally augmented eidetic induction reaches up if i can use those metaphors into nishitani but it also reaches down into empirical work like the work of uh, that uh, there's a brilliant anthropologist she's maybe one of the best cultural anthropologists around right now and, and she's working right now her name's lerman and she she's written a book. I'm making my way through it called "How God Becomes Real," uh, and she has all of these wonderful papers and articles out there. Uh, she is 
brilliant and she's bringing back anthropology she represents a, a stage of anthropology that's getting beyond the endless sort of hermeneutic deconstructive thing and getting back to like let's do anthropology like let's try and understand culture um and she talks about and she's talking about like she talks about and, and this is the the third way in which right the third the third way that you were talking about here and the metaxu that the god the god um and oh, by the way, bearing witness to Epiphany, Rusin's take on the Greek gods, astonishingly brilliant, astonishingly brilliant. But anyways, Lerman's doing something similar. And she talks about that the god, the gods, or god, I god, is not real, either in a subjective or an objective sense of realness. Um, and so she talks about, that's why the book is entitled How God Becomes Real, this process, right? That's very much what we're talking about here. And she says, and she she goes in and she again brilliant people do this they take stuff that's so obvious and then they go see what this means and you go oh my gosh i didn't realize that and she said notice that when people talk about um i'll use one of her examples and i do not mean anything uh irreligious or disrespectful not neither does she right and she's talk and i, I brought this up with paul i think in jp um and she's because one of her ethnographic groups was a christian evangelical community and they, when she and she says, you know, Jesus is real, but not in the same way that people talk about their feelings being real or rocks being real. Um, she gives this example of she's talking to someone and it's, you know, Jesus is real, but you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't say uh, Jesus will do my homework. Right. Like you can ask Jesus for wisdom. Uh, right. But you don't like, I don't have to worry about my homework. Jesus will do it like that's ridiculous. Nobody thinks that way. And, and what, like, and, and it's like, and the fact, like, it's like, yeah, when they say Jesus is real, and then they do this weird thing that is confusing. They say Jesus is real to me. And then they try to make reality a subjective thing in some sort of Berkeleyan idealism, which just goes nowhere. But she says, notice that, and notice that the realness is something that you have to constantly work at, which made me think of the central argument that right, the thing that Scotus was rejecting, or, and especially when it comes to fruition and Descartes, the idea that certain truths, especially in the ontological sense, are only available, us, available to us in transformation. People have to constantly undergo transformation in order to, I don't know what to say, in order to preserve uh, that's the realness of Jesus, Right, but, but 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 that even saying it that way makes it sound too subjective. The point is, is she's trying to she's trying part of what's happening in her ethnography is she's trying to articulate the processes and the phenomenology of this third way in which things are real, this imaginal way that's doing the eidetic induction and drawing things out and putting us into reciprocal opening. And, and she talks about and she says, look at all the hard work people do. They have to do all this work in order to make God real. But once it happens, they don't then claim that they made it happen. It's this weird thing. And, 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 and I think the fact that, right, there's this, I think, I, re I highly recommend the book. It's brilliant, it's brilliant. Because it's getting at that this notion that we're talking about, and we are quite rightly talking about it in, in you know, quite profound philosophical language, but it comes into the phenomenology of people's personal religious experience that, right? I, 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 I don't wanna say concrete because that's not the right word, but we're, talking, we're not talking about something that's abstract, conceptual, just philosophical. It is transformatively present in people's lives and experience. The problem of course with fundamentalism is it tries to say that's just the same way rocks and trees are real, or it's just the same way that my feelings are real, right? It, it, it's trying to, and it, it, what she's trying to say is, no, there's this other important way in which things are real. I, I highly recommend the book it, it, because it's convergent with what we're talking about, but it grounds it in ethnography of, I, I just every, I don't know, this sounds, I, uh, I don't want to be, I don't want to sound, pretend, but to, people who are not pursuing philosophy per se, nevertheless are invoking in an existentially pivotal way what we're trying to talk about right here right now mm. so right this 
again, this realness is a is a kind of other kind. And we exactly. can't that, that, yeah. I think even even Nishitani makes this point in the first chapter. He says something like, right, um, he, he asked sometimes as a kind of koan, kind of like maybe right or the, how is this in the chapter? He says something like man can sneeze and God cannot. He makes yes. this argument, right? We can we can do we can we have we can do all sorts of things that yeah. God of course cannot do. Jesus right. cannot do the homework. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, and but right, he was he was up to something important, right? That that yeah. God is, is of a different kind. Yes, yes. Then then we, yeah. we we imagine it's not a it's not a being like 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 a rock or right. anything but a different kind of being. And this, right, yeah. go on. I just wanted to say, I just wanted to supplement. God is neither a being nor an experience, right? Yes. That, right, yes. right. Yes. getting beyond both of the, a being, a being, little b. God, I would even say, you because this language has come to be so not, God is neither an object, right, of experience nor a subject of experience, right? God is not a, not a thing or an experience, right? God is something beyond, right? both of those in a profound profound way it's it's like what what you know when you, you you read dionysus right and right and god being right especially even more so the one the ground of being is not real in the way that the things are sandy's book on the parmenides the, he says the main thing that Plato's trying to do with dialectic is to free us from thinking that the core of what was at nominalism, which is the unquestioned intuition that the really real things are the individual objects, right? And to realize that's exactly the wrong way to think. Sorry, mm -hmm. I wanted to just put that out there as, as, as something. And that's also, that's also the, that's also why Nishitani, for example, and myself, we kind of like reject all, all isms. Yes, all, but, was, but all idealisms, then they want to say there is just the mind or the spirit. Right. And then we, we, are, we are again left with just the being or a thing. Yeah. But also, also all sorts of, and right, then that's, that's also, then this comes also to an object. Yes. Right, that, that's what he says. I can't neither reduce this, let's say, to an idea nor to, uh, to pure material. Yes. Yes. It, it explodes yes. in the, both directions. So yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> totally. So, so we, we, we make the same error then with beings. Once that ontological difference between, let's say, God or the being yeah. and beings is, is collapsed, then, yes. then we fall into confusion. Um, but that, that's important that what the anthropologist said is, is very important. Um, and Heidegger also, they, they, he makes a similar point. Um, we need to constantly hold ourselves in that so we can we, we have to hold ourselves let's say in realness yes we have we, we have to practice it all the time yes Otherwise, I, think so. <laughs> I think that i think i think what you're coming to is what i would call the a a, a, a revalorization and a re-understanding of ritual that's yeah. what ritual is that's what ritual is properly understood. It isn't a compulsive behavior that is ultimately meaningless. It is instead, you know, ritual is the, 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 the practice of constantly comporting ourselves to be in right relationship. Yes, exactly, exactly. Okay, now, now I think I forgot where I want to <laughs> what i wanted to say and where i want to go well you were saying how um, the anthropologist was right about that this is something we constantly have to hold we constantly have to renew we can't we can't take it for granted the way we can the realness of my couch it's it's yeah. not because right because 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 i i think this is part of you know what what heidegger was trying to get on heidegger uh, was trying to get at with uh, our mortality um, in a certain way um, but does that was that enough to trigger you what you wanted to say or to, to, to help you remember yeah we, we we have to write we 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 learn to hold ourselves and i think personally that meditation is a good way to yes. to, to do yeah. that because right what we try to get out we we try to see okay we we 
we realize at some point, okay, my, my mind is attaching itself yes. to things yeah, all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. Read, thoughts are coming and going and and right it's so easy to like the right the monkey mind we, we grab yep, something yeah 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 we, yep. we and then then we are again left with let's say a being and when we do this very carefully right and let's say again with dogen yeah dropping off body and mind, mind yes yes that there is this disclosure of that which is no thingness that which yes. is never a being which however it is also real in a, in a very real sense and yeah, yeah. there's this right and religion is to, as nishitani might say that the the real self-realization of reality reality yeah through, through like we, we we come to realize the realness of of no thingness which is again never a being um but it's nonetheless there yes um, yeah and Right, the hard way is that how can we how can we comport ourselves to something that is not a being? Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> that's, the, that's the and that's the error, right? And then it would, I'm wondering what that anthropologist then had to say, about, like when she did her research. Well, I, I'm only halfway through the book, so <laughs> I, I, I fear of, uh, of misrepresenting her argument through my ignorance of of the whole thing. But she talks about she talks about ritual and how important it is. Uh, to this whole process of training a, a comportment and of training a kind of humility and recognition of the need to constantly return uh, to the practice yeah. of the comportment. Yeah, I think meditation and contemplative practices are, are very, very crucial for that, that really real. And the thing about the really real is, and I talk about this in, in some of my other videos, I think also with uh, special, uh, the video series I did with Zivi Slavin, on cognitive science and mysticism, right? About autonormativity. There, there, yeah, yeah, the, the, the part of the way in which there's a goodness of being is the way we experience it as demanding up from us, right? Autonormativity. Um, and, and that's that's another dimension to you know the, this ontological sense of goodness. There's a goodness that we 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 experience that the autonormativity as yes, exactly. Like that's the part that's so fascinating to me. Yes, exactly, exactly, right? I should come more and more into conformity with this. But that's a way of saying there's an ontological goodness to the real, really real that transcends my subjective desires and wants and needs because it's a reversal. It's not how is that useful to me because I value it. It's how can I conform myself to this, to this? And again, that's, that's I, I, like, this is what the good, the good, the, like the, I always, you know, I went through, you know, 30 years, no oh gosh, more than 30 years. It's going to be 40 years now of education in Plato. And for the longest time, this is why I, I, I for, a long, for a long time, I preferred the Neoplatonic, the one, because I couldn't get, why, why the good? Why the good? And I got some vague notion about normativity. But now, now this is the crux for me, right? This, right? And, and, and like, don't you, don't you expect, I mean, this is an honest question between friends. Like when you get to that state, the prajna state, like when you've done meditation and contemplation and you get to that and you get the, the real self-disclosing of reality. And I'll now add the phrase for its own sake, right? Right. Cause it's not doing it for you. It's just doing it. Like, like the rose yeah. blooms for yeah. its own. Yeah. yeah. Don't you, don't you just feel a fund like feel isn't even the right yeah. word. Don't you realize a fundamental goodness in that? Yeah. So, right, Nishitani, he talks about exactly the same thing in religion, yeah. nothing is one, one yeah. of my favorite pages. He says, okay, what is disclosed? He calls it a field of aboriginality, where all things yeah. show yeah. forth in their selfness, in their suchness as they are. Yes. Right? He, he says this over and over. Yes. And then, yeah. then he says, okay, this discloses also, also what he calls um, a logos or a koto. Yeah. So he says it discloses this is again logos is also not really a thing in, yes, in the yes, inventory or, yeah. of beings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Koto, right? Maybe you, I don't know if you've read the dialogue between Heidegger and the Japanese. I did, yes, I did, yes. There is this where he says Koto is that which is hardest to say what this actually is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this yes. is in the okay. So he says when this field 
let's say that this field of shunyata is this close to us, beings, again, they show themselves for their own sake as they are. And what they disclose is, he says, um, first is this ontological order where the is odd distinction is bridged again. Yes, yes. Because there is this on autonomative, yeah. proleptic rationality, whatever we may yeah. call it. Yeah. Um, and I will. So what he says, what what things things he says things on this field are preaching the Dharma. Yes. Things are things are calling. Yeah. He even says it with Heidegger. He says there's a geheis, there is a there's a calling. Yes. What do you say, yeah. right? The, yeah, the things yeah. and now now they are, right, what you have in meditation now, all the things are calling. Yes. Are calling yes. out for, yes. for being being minded as they are in their substance. Yes. Um, and he, he, he then, Nishitani, right, he quotes this um, from the pine tree, learn the koto of the, the pine tree, and yes. from the bamboo, learn yes. the koto of the bamboo. Yes. And the koto is this, it's like the logos. It's yes. this, it's this, this, what, it's this order that bridges between the is and the ought. Yes. Yes. Um, and in, through oh, let's say through this yeah. order of the, the logos or the koto the through line that is going through me and the pine tree or through me and the bamboo we become the bamboo yes or the pine tree yes and then yes. we also right we become we realize reality in its realness and in a sense we become re, we become reality yeah. right but but that exactly and that becoming the the bamboo that realizing reality is the same way that God becomes real that Lerman's talking about. It, we don't become the bamboo in the sense that you could cut me up and make a house out of me or something like that. Yeah, That's yeah. not what you mean. You're meaning that you're meaning this third way, right? This third way of realness. But, but for me, like that, that point, the, the third way, it's like the third way takes us back to this point you're talking about. Right, and that Nishitani is talking about because, like Schindler says, like what Plato is trying to get us to believe is if things don't, if they, if they're not for their own sake, if they're if they're not singing their own name, if you'll allow me to speak poetically, <laughs> then they can't be, they can't be real, because yeah. the, the, yeah. the, it is their, it, there has to be something about them that is in no way for me in order for them to be real. Or else they are just subsumed within me, right? The thing that makes them real, and we we tried to get this with the old notion of object, that which objects to me, right? We, they, they, but we've lost that insight. We've lost the idea that, right, and that that that, and we reduced it to the inertia of inertial matter and all this stuff. But let's put that move aside and go back to no, no. There's something. This this has it for itselfness, that right. Is it is its grounding of its realness, and precisely because it is other than me, it nevertheless calls to me. It calls to me. It calls to me because I am. I am a re. I am a relation to realness, and so anything that sings realness calls to me, and that's where the is and the ought are now. There's no distinction between them, and this is what Schindler's argument is. Uh, that Plato, he's, this uh, brilliant book, this is what Schindler is arguing is at the core of Plato's Republic. This is the core thing he's trying to get us to see. It reminds me, the way to think about it, a, a good place is Murdoch's Sovereignty of the Good, where she says at the core of morality, deeper than morality, is paying attention to things the way they deserve to be paid attention to. And that is, right, that when you're doing that, the, there's no distinction between the is and the ought. You ought to be doing it because that's what that thing is, right? And, and like, I feel that this is getting so close, right? I feel all of this coming so close together, but there's like, ah, but, that, but that's the wonder of it too, right? That's the wonder of it. Mm. Mm. I think of the Browning, I think of the Browning line, right? Uh, a man's reach should exceed his grasp or what is a heaven for? <laughs> Which, uh, right. Uh, and, and so, uh, and, and, you know, and that goes back to what we were talking about earlier about epictasis, like, like that, that, that there's this, like to come into right relationship 
with that through, through the third way to that pivot point that you were talking, you and I've been talking about, like, it's, I, it's hard not to agree with the neoplatonic Christian tradition, or I think also with an equal kind of move, convergent move coming out of Buddhism, that, that that's it, that's what we're seeking um, insofar yeah. as we are, are beyond our seeking as animals, which is to itself legitimate, there is a seeking that we have um, as persons. And, and, and this is how I try to interpret, and I'm, the Christians are going to get mad at me probably, but this is how I try to interpret Augustine's idea that the, the heart is hungry for God in, in, in a profound way. And of course, that has been just turned into just horrible, horrible things in the hands of fundamentalists and all kinds of, and for the triumphalism of a certain political model of Christianity. And I want to reject all that bullshit, but I do want that there's something we are, we, like this idea that, well, I'm just, I've said, it, there's just that point and, 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 and we are by being in relationship to that, that point, that, that pivot. That 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 pivot point that where the sieve is the sieve right exactly um, is not yeah yeah exactly exactly <laughs> right but the sieve is again the, the sieve is this is this point that establishes the identity yes the, the you would say right the non logical identity yes where whereby and now we can speak in Eckhartian terms maybe whereby my God is God's ground and God's ground is my ground yes yes that there is and there is maybe maybe we, we have to this is hard to capture in language but there in that is the is this pivot point as well yeah yes the buddhists just do it more elegantly because they just they just throw like right those those chinese characters and then yeah. in, in the, <laughs> like and then in between they throw this this siva this yeah 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 this soko in japanese um yeah. that's it's it's more it's in, in in Western languages you you have to talk in different ways, um, but right we we the siva is that which is this point where where then I see, let's say through that that which through I can. Right become. God and then then I immediately realize how God's ground is also my ground. Yes. And yes. There is a there's a, there's a shared, in that in all that calling. We share the same. We share the same identity, which we always forget, and that's in yeah. a sense that's the mist. That, that, that's the sieve that is so important. It's this pivot point that yeah. that connects that connects us all. So. <laughs> yeah, the dynamics. Yes. <clears throat> it's notice how we're invoking this very different space, and for me, this space is outside or perhaps beneath the space that's supposed yeah. to be exhaustively occupied by theism and atheism. And, and I like, we're talking about God here and I do not think that's inappropriate, uh, especially if God, the origin is the origin from good, uh, which is given as one of the etymologies of that word. Um, I, I like, well, uh, let me ask you from, for me, I find that another one of the things that this transcends, and it, and it is good, pun intended, it is good that it does so, it transcends the theism-atheism divide. That it, 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 yeah. it, 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 it is trying to break the, just the, the I, I think of theism and atheism the same way I think of the, you know, uh, the upward hierarchy of being and the downward hierarchy of reductionism. They're just, they're just, they, they're sharing the same structure. They just invert each other's right stance. Whereas we are trying to get out of it in a profound way to get to right the, 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 the third way of knowing, the third way of being, right, this third, right, this place where we come into right relationship um, with the third kind of realness that is somehow the really real. Um, and, and like I said, I do not think it's in, in, inappropriate to use the word God, but I guess what I want to ask you is how do you use that word while 
standing, well, or if you do, I'm presupposing something in this question, so you can challenge it. How do you use that word? Because you use it, and, I, I, and I'm finding it good in this discourse, so don't misunderstand me. How do you use that word without falling into, you know, the Calvinist Cartesian project of, right, of, that's now unfolding as the perpetual, stupid, uh, irresolvable battle between theism and atheism, right? Because I think that battle is not a place where we will find a resolution to the meaning crisis. It is one of the deepest symptoms of the meaning crisis. Sorry, that's a long question, but it, it's like we're talking about God, so it's got to be a long question, right? No, that's that's good. <laughs> yeah. um, no, no, for me, right? But God is God is. I, I mean, many people make this, right? They make a, a fantasy out of God, an image, yeah. an yes. idol, yeah. something, yeah. right? somewhere we don't know where exactly yeah yeah <laughs> but, well. but it's kind of like it's also god is in the in the inventory of beings so to yeah, say yeah so yeah that's yeah. often it's even when when some like they right there are these there is I, I just really i despise those debates between atheists and theists yes because it's just this cheap dialectical way of exchanging arguments and then also yes. making of god again a being like comparing it, I don't know, to a fairy or to a, yeah, yeah. something, something in that kind of like sense. Yes. But right, right. What, for example, this book from Eric Pearl is great because yes. he makes this line right that the sense of being, starting yeah. with Parmenides and then going on with Plato, yeah, um, Plotinus, even up to Thomas Aquinas, right? Yes. There wasn't. There wasn't. There wasn't. There was an essential recognition that yeah. um first of all right thinking and being are connected yes it means yeah. the right the, being is intelligible it's yes. it's not it's not just right it's not um it's not just sheer material that has no yep, yep. intrinsic value or so like but there is this tight link linking between being and thinking um and that God cannot cannot just be grasped like an object. Yes. What yes. that happened, right? What he says with Dan Scotus. Yes. That there, we 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 made we made God an object. Um, yes. So when I'm talking about God, I'm talking about this. Um, right? How, how is this? I think J.P. Marceau would say something like, right? That, that the ground of yeah yeah ground through which and in which all things exist yes in the world but something there's again ground is perhaps even the wrong word because it's a it's a it's an ungrund as the mystics yeah. say right yeah. it's always it's always withdrawing it's always it's always more we cannot we can never capture it with no. with no. with any of our any of our notions um I it, think that I've, I just want to say it has an ultimate for itselfness, yeah, right for its own sake, right? But keep going, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's and and right. They they are even in the, they have some notions, right? God calls calls us, yeah, to accomplish our own goodness. Yes. So we come to our own selfness. And that's right. And that's even that's even connected to freedom in, in the classical yeah. metaphysics. Yeah, so we are yeah. not libertarian freedom. And this is also Nishitani criticizes uh, libertarian yeah. freedom at some point. Yeah. It's not that we can pursue like any of our whims and any of yeah. our yeah. wants, yeah. whatever. I, okay, now I, I, I don't know. I want a hamburger. Now I have the freedom to eat 10 hamburgers because I'm... I'm but yeah. it's liberty in the sense is understood as as the freedom to ac accomplish your own being to to come yes. to come into yeah. your own so to say to come into your 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 selfness so to say yeah. to come into yeah. your own suchness that that's that's freedom and there is a there is a rationality behind this and this rationality is is connected to to god's calling so to say yes 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 there is, this is even in, in aristotle that we find right there's a, there's yep. a rationality to beings and it in Plotinus too, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Um, this is good. Like you're, you're, you're really unpacking uh, very clearly 
an alternative way of the, the, using the term God. So keep I, going. I think I think what what David Bentley Hart says because he says I listen to a lot of his stuff recently because I'm I'm really interested in this. He and I are supposed um, to have a have a, a voices with Raviki together, which uh, uh, really yeah, yeah. Uh, there's uh, uh, there's somebody who is. Uh, follows both of our work, who's actively getting an email and trying to get us. Uh, I, I'd very much like to talk to him. I, uh, I've read some of his books. I'll reread more. I'm actually, uh, I'm doing Lexio Divina with his recent translation of the New Testament. Um, mm. Keep going. Though. I have it on my reading list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, there is, right? He's a classical theist, which is kind yeah. of like the position that that we had in, in the Neoplatonic tradition. Yes, yes. Where's this, where's this, 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 there's, the, there's a recognition of the mutual need, let's say, of the apophatic, the negative tradition. Yeah, and the cataphatic, yes. And the cataphatic tradition, yes. Yeah. Um, but there's, right, there's always like an, a recognition, but yeah, we can't talk about God is a no thing. God is not, this yeah. was like very clear for the for, for people in antiquity. As yeah. you said with Gregory of Nyssa, right? Yeah, yeah. God is the yeah. eternal field. Yes. The field, right? Yeah. The field of intelligibility. Um, and I think I think right that that what we call then call this kind of like modern theism and this modern atheism as well. Yeah. This is yeah. this is like this is like um this is coming from a lot of I guess errors that occurred after um yeah after we we end after with Descartes yes. after we kind of like um left the the Middle Ages. Um and we kind of right but right, you you say this often, right? We and now, now we have postmodernism, and it's kind of like a virus on modernism, yeah, yeah, yeah. parasite, but not <laughs> yeah. not some not something right that, that creatively tries to develop something new, yes, or at least a continuation, let's say, fr from that project that has clearly exhausted itself in our time, yeah, yeah. but co going back and trying to revive the the neoplatonic tradition and the apophatic tradition yes yeah of course right it, we see it in heidegger we see it in derrida i see it in right i see it in, in you i see it in, in nishitani also right totally he, in nishitani yes yeah so so let let this is really good let, let me let me probe a little a little further um because one of the things is like one of the things that I want to say, and I think I hear you saying is, so God isn't the supreme being. That's a, in fact, that's probably the absolute worst way to think of God. Yeah. Um, and so instead, we're, we're we're thinking like like the pivot point, the uh, the field, or all the all this other language we're trying to get. But what we said earlier, this and when, and that's why you know I remember I invoked Lerman. This isn't this isn't like sort of I don't know esoteric math or something right it, here's the question then this involves me being in relationship to something that is in profound sense the ground of my personhood so it's deeply personal to me but that does not mean i'm in relationship to a person Right, because the problem with the word person is we are bound to beings. A, a person is a being, right? And, and even a supreme person is just a supreme being, right? And and so the the the, the is to try part of unlocking this the, and and making it melt and flow what has been frozen is to realize you know Spinoza says this the wise person pursues never never makes any effort in his intellectual love of god to have god love him in return he he, he like that is would be the absolute wrong thing to do um because he he obviously sees the relationship there's a new book out on, on spinoza's religion which is fantastic by the way can't remember the author right now it's called spinoza's religion brilliant oh brilliant book and right the the the, the point i'm trying to get to is and the, what I'm trying to unlock is this idea of a profoundly personal relationship to something that is profoundly not personal, but that doesn't mean that it's impersonal either. It's neither the rock 
nor in intersubjectivity. It's not the objectivity of the, it's not the realness rock of the rock. It's not the realness of the intersubjectivity of personhood. It's this other way in which the really real really is, right? The, so the, like, yeah. how do you make sense of a profoundly personal relationship to something that is uh, neither personal nor impersonal? I mean, transpersonal is perhaps the best adjective we have right now. What does that, what does that, what does that mean to you? Um, the first thing, right, that comes to my mind is now Nishitani, right? He, he yeah. says, he says, we, we have a personally impersonal or impersonally personal relationship. Yes, yes, exactly. God, God unites, right, both of these aspects. Yes, yes, yes. And he, right, he, he makes a lot of arguments for this, right? There are these, these impersonal elements of it that, that like, like the sun is like, it's shining on all beings yeah, in the yeah. same way. It doesn't yeah. make it... There's, a, there's an essential non-discernment yeah. there. That there's an essential, right? Like agape. Yes, yes, yeah. So this, this, <laughs> this personally impersonal relation, it, it's in a sense, it, I, think, I think this is what agape achieves. Oh, because, yes. Because, yes. because agape, right? Agape oh, and this is what Jesus of Nazareth is saying when he invokes that when he invokes the model of yeah, yeah. how God makes the sun and the rain. Keep going, keep going, yes. So Gape is opening, Nishitani would say, is disclosing this field again. And then, then, so it's a, right, there's an impersonal move, but yeah. there's, a, there's this, this radical, let's say, outpouring, this, yeah. this self-emptying. And then, then I, and, and by, by impersonally loving reality, things then shine forth as they are in their suchness. Right. And then there, then we can have a personal relationship relationship with as well. Because and we're I, knowing the bamboo by being the bamboo. Yes. Yes. But right, that precedes this kind of like this precedes. This is not a merely personal relationship. Nope, nope. But it's in it's it's at the same time it's an impersonal relationship as well. Yes. Because I'm I'm kind of like I first need to this yeah this is well this, yeah. I first need this I first need to open myself even towards something where where I which I can never have really just a personal relationship to. Right, right, right. Because right. this is this would then exhaust the whole thing if it would yes. just be personal. That's very well said. I, that, I mean, whenever I talk to you, I, I realize, and I hope, <laughs> I hope I haven't been guilty of plagiarism. I realize how deeply and profoundly Nishitani has, has uh, like has affected me and informed me. I mean, I read that book. I studied that book twice, two different times, and I keep coming back to Nishitani's work. But that, yeah, that passage and the connection you just made to Agape, because one of the things that's interesting me is I've become very interested in Christian Platonism, where you have, like, and we've invoked a lot of the Christian Platonists here, where there's an attempt, and I think largely successful, and even, you know, there's, you know, um, returning to reality, Christian Platonism. Uh, for today by Taylor and others, right? Uh, there's an attempt in Christian Platonism to integrate agape, if I can put it this way. This is, don't think this is reductive, it's just gestural, I, where I can integrate the agape of, uh, of Christianity with the logos of Neoplatonism in a profound, uh, in a profound way. Uh, and, and the move you just made there, right, of understanding the connection between agape and the impersonal personal and the personal impersonal. That was brilliant. That was really good. That, thank you for that. That was excellent. Right. It's almost as if agape opens that impersonal field and logos then opens that personal field where we then have again this with the is all yes, this yes. calling of the, right, the, 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 the flowers singing and calling for us. So, so yeah. we, we mind them in their suchness, but this is, is, kind of like simultaneously we we first have to to open that agapic field yes that that's, yeah. that makes that all possible in the first place i think that is very well said 
I, I suppose there's a way in which the reverse is also the case that the logos field <laughs> opens things up such that the relationships of agape become yeah, possible. Yeah. They yeah. mutually yeah, yeah, yeah. they yeah. mutually afford each other. And I suppose that in some of the uh, maybe like in Maximus or, or or in Dionysus that that's what they're trying to get at with sort of the mystical vision of Christ as the logos grounding the agape and the agape grounding the logos so if I can, and then the two together grounding the impersonal personal relationship with God um, mm. that would be a very interesting theology of the sonship of Christ uh, <laughs> uh, right uh, that'd be a very interesting way of thinking about it. I'm, I'm, well, but our job, my job, is, I, I, and I don't think it's your job. I'm not trying to uh, uh, <laughs> revivify Christianity. Neither am I trying to destroy it. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I, I respect it as a powerful source, especially Christian Platonism. Uh, just as I respect uh, the Kyoto School, the integration of uh, sort of post-phenomenological uh, Western philosophy with Buddhism that you see in the Kyoto School. I also regard that as, uh, you know, uh, just, a, a, and a, for me, a sacred source that I go to time and time again, as I think it is for you, for trying to wrestle with these, these really deep questions. Again, in a way, apropos, that is simultaneously most respectful of the impersonal and of the personal aspects of what we're talking about here. Mm. so so daniel this i i think we should uh, probably draw it to a close there that's a good place um mm. i want to invite you to come on again to voices with Raviki. um we have a lot more we can keep going we could obviously talk for hours and i think if we break it up into uh, increments of an hour and a half or so that will be more digestible uh to people watching uh but I wanted to give you the opportunity to any last thing you wanted to say. Just, just thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I've come across your work um, when quite, quite long ago, two or three years ago for the first time. And it, it really, it helped me with with just many things just for, for for my own life you connected dots where i couldn't see dots and <laughs> not just right not just intellectually of course but it just helped me a lot in my personal life which was is or is not always easy um so so that there i'm, I'm and your channel is, is has really become one of my one of my pillars let's say where i can really I see, I see the goodness of being, let's say, coming to the fore when I, when I listen to you and your interlocutors. And that's just something that I would like to say to you. So thank you for all the things that you are doing. Thank you for saying that. That's very encouraging. And uh, you, you have a beautiful soul. So I'm glad that, um, I'm glad you're finding a place, a field. A basho, <laughs> where it can come to greater uh, fruition for its own sake. Um, so uh, thank you very much, uh, very much, Daniel. Thank you.